my name is Jessie, and um, I've been in the studio for about four years, downstairs for a year, and um, and I make jewelry here, mostly silver jewelry, some gold jewelry. Um, during the summer, I do some custom work. For the rest of the year, I work on my own designs, and I work full time. A part time contractor comes in, does some some of the work for me. I set up different things and, and uh, throughout the day she gets them all done and then we go on to the next step. There's um, a wax injector here and uh, these get casted and then when they get back from the caster um, we take them over to the bench and file off any of the extra things and, and um, clean them up a little bit and then they get tumbled or polished or you know all the different processes like that. Um, and then there's a lot of things that are constructed as well. So I take wire and maybe make solder it into a, a hoop. Actually, there's some right here. So these are soldered into hoops from wire, and then they will get hammered like this, and or some smaller ones get hammered like this. And then you know from there they'll get an earring post or a hoop for a necklace or something like that. And um, yeah, we've got a torch back there. For soldering and a polishing wheel here, so just all different steps in the process. Well, I was downstairs for about six months, I think, uh, sharing a space even smaller than this with somebody, which was interesting, <laughs> and it uh, worked out well though. And uh, before that, I w had a little section in a bedroom of my house, and then I realized I was making way too much noise and being way too dirty, so I needed to get out of there. And I liked the separation too of not having my workspace in my living space it's not really for me that doesn't really work I know for some people that works well for me I need a separation I need to be able to go to work and leave work and that's why I like coming here because I live about a 15 minute walk so I that's my little commute walk down here and get to hang out for the day and and then walk home so that for me works well having that separation it was a mattress factory mm -hmm. in I don't know, a long time ago, maybe 1912 or something like that even. I'm not, a, I'm not sure, I don't know the exact number, but it's an old mattress factory. And then they just, uh, I think it's been artist studios since for like 15 years or something like that. And they just keep putting, you know, they just put up all the walls and created the different spaces. And downstairs where the woodworkers are, the spaces are way bigger. And this is actually one of, I think, I think it's like the second or third smallest space in the building. Most of the spaces are way bigger than this and people share them or they pay for the big space. This is nice size for me because I can actually afford to have the whole thing as my studio. I came into this space and there was uh, just nothing but the walls um, and part of the loft was built and then I extended it and put another level in it. Um, and then I did all the, put in the counters, I put in all the shelves which I'm going to change to cupboard soon enough. And I even put the floor in um, because the floor was like a, it's kind of like a layer of hard tar that somebody had poured over the old floor. Some of the other studios have that here. And it was just always looked filthy and was impo if I dropped something, it was really hard to see. Uh, so I got this hardwood floor or the laminate floor put in, which has made a huge difference, really lightened it up, up the place as well. Um, replaced that wall because it was all particle board put together and painted it and I've painted these walls that one not yet <laughs> and then I brought in everything that's in here as well the electricity especially on this floor is really lacking um, the uh, like I have for this whole studio I have one fuse or and it's also shared by another studio so sometimes I come in in the morning and the fuse will have already been blown. So I have to find the fuse or go out to the fuse box and, and flick the fuse. And also because I have like I have a heated pot that's for um, after soldering, you put it in there. It's like a light acid bath. It needs to be warm. So that's on all the time. There's no uh, there's no heat in on this floor. Beside, well, in this studio. Um, besides anything that I would put in here. So I have a heater going in the winter because it's freezing in here without it. And then, you know, if I want to polish, then I have to turn this off and the heater 
off if I want to put the microwave on to heat up the water and so it can be really tricky with the heat with the electricity. I don't have water here luckily the sink is right around the corner from my studio which if it wasn't would be a problem for me because I use water regularly um, and you know we're always kind of running back and forth to get water but uh, I, I asked about putting in a sink once and it was going to be, it wasn't the putting in the plumbing that was an issue, it would have been the drainage for the, for the drain would have been the issue and um, really having it just around the corner is, is good enough so, so that works out okay. Every once in a while I wonder about this place closing down um, but you know it's interesting because there aren't a lot of artist spaces available. Um, in this city because they're mostly rented out to higher you know income kind of things like industrial spaces or whatever but what I've noticed lately since the the economic downturn is that a lot of the larger spaces aren't being rented so I don't know I think in a way maybe there is you know a long life to be had here um, as artist spaces because you know we're filling this place and all the rents getting paid um, it's a really old building. I don't know. It seems like, you know, it, hopefully it's going to stand forever. There's a good chance it's built like a brick house. And I don't know as far as, you know, but if there, there was any major problems, I don't think it would probably be worth fixing. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to have faith that it's going to be here as long as I need it because I would be pretty concerned if I had to find another place in this city. As far as uh, comparing in a global kind of way the support for the arts, Vancouver is pretty sad. There's very little support for arts here. Um, partly because we're not a culture that necessarily recognizes the importance of arts. Subsidized studio spaces for artists would be great. I, I was talking to another artist a while ago and, and he was suggesting the idea of live work spaces that then could be turned into subsidized retirement housing for artists, which I thought was a great idea because a lot of people who are devoting their lives to you know, the art that they feel strongly about and contributes to their, their community and reflects and speaks of their community, those artists, you know, that work doesn't really pay. And those artists are probably going to be in some kind of subsidized housing, possibly, later on. So why not create a space that's for artists that, you know, is a long-term place where people know that they can stay later and be able to afford it you know some kind of subsidy that can help you in your working years and then maybe later on help you you know because you know artists don't stop working right um, just a space that people can afford to stay